as I was laying in bed, I was thinking, all right, what, what kind of approach do I want to take tomorrow? And I was thinking that it could be cool to really, you know, focus on simplifying uh, the scene down to, you know, simple shapes. And, you know, I know that's something that obviously we've done before, but could be, I just feel like that's something I want to really focus on. So... Like almost like like the flatness of the shape. Yeah, even maybe yeah, like even flatness and trying not to, I don't know, see how abstracted I could leave it, um, and have it still work as a painting. And I don't think I'm going to tone. Are you going to tone today? Well, I've I've got oh, to wipe down. Over an old painting. Yeah, or yeah. I wiped it down. It's just kind of a random colors on it. But. Yeah. So I think what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do what Araya did in the last video where he sketched in. Um, a lizard and crimson. I'm gonna try that and then just paint over the blank white canvas. We'll see what happens. Cool. Actually, on second thought, I think what I'm gonna do is just trace my shadow <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and paint it in in ultramarine and call it a day. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, so I'm looking off towards the ocean. I'm gonna make something of this scene here and uh, definitely gonna have to rearrange the shapes a bit. But I do like how there's like the distant white water uh, and ocean. And then uh, there's like sort of a pattern in the foreground here, this like, you know, more saturated green grass. Um, but just going to basically, you know, play around with this scene and see what I come up with. I'm not worried about getting a good painting today. Sometimes I just feel like it's important to get out and push yourself to do something different. And that's more what I'm looking to do today. And I find that, you know, painting um, in a sort of exploratory or experimental way. It's just, it's just, uh, it's basically, it's just really fun to do. I can actually enjoy it so much. I'm enjoying the idea of coming out and playing and not worrying about, um, you know, whether the painting's successful or not. It's just trying to push myself to do something that's different from what I've done before. Okay, let me make this larger shape here all right this portion here is the white water and since the white water is constantly changing I'm just kind of looking watching for interesting patterns and one thing I'm noticing is as the wave breaks and the waves are really big today as the waves break there's like you know a line in the white water right here you can kind of see it'll be just by the shape of the white water you can tell that there's like a wave breaking right there at least it looks like that to me All right, so mixing up a dark here using ultramarine blue, some burnt sienna, and a touch of uh, cadmium yellow medium. I'm gonna kind of experiment um, with just putting in vertical strokes for, you know, this is something, again, I'm kind of ripping off Araya from last week, but I noticed that he built up his, you know, his, like his scrubbing was done with just a bunch of vertical strokes. And I didn't watch closely enough to know exact to see exactly what he was doing, um, but I really liked the effect. And I thought, oh, I want to experiment with that. Uh, as I mentioned, I like the idea of doing, you know, doing something that's unusual for me. You know, shaking things up, uh, and maybe I'll make some discoveries. I'll make these shapes sort of lighter in value and uh, so that it kind of creates a sense of depth. These are a little bit close in shape. Maybe I'll make this one a little bigger. Maybe move it over a little bit. Something like that. All right, so for the green grass in the foreground, I'm using uh, cadmium yellow medium and some ultramarine blue. And I'm trying to like keep the paint at roughly a mid-tone um, because the white water in the distance is going to be the brightest, uh, you know, shape on the canvas. Kind of tricky to do vertical strokes for some of these shapes where, you know, the irregular, you know, shapes of the path here. When I first started painting, I would make the edges of the, of like a path or something like really perfect. And now I try to look for the irregularities. One thing about this sort of paint application is you really got to mix up a lot of paint if you're going to cover, um, 
you know, a blank canvas. Right, yeah. And I'm trying to, you know, keep it to the liquid to a minimum, but you can see it's hard oh, to get cool. coverage. But, you know, it creates a different effect, right? Yeah, it's almost like a, like a Nick Coley kind of effect. Actually, that's true. Yeah, Nick Coley does. He'll do a lot of directional, like, vertical strokes like this too, huh? I think so. And, uh, and I'm kind of getting to... I need to break up that line a little bit. But then there's kind of a lighter, almost yellow ochre around the outsides here. Yeah. But see, look, it's very hard to get that. Where normally I just go scrub this in in right. seconds. So, but it, this is very unnatural. And it takes a lot of restraint for me to paint like this. But again, like that's a kind of a fun thing. I think there needs to be like maybe a little patch of it out here. Yeah, I think that's gonna green. all add up to a, a really cool effect. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, yeah it could be cool. Um, like, I, yeah, I, lo I love how, like, how much variety is in there already. I mean, not, like, well, it's sort temperature, of, like, what, is in there, too. Yeah, well, see, you have to keep mixing up different, you know, different piles of paint to cover it. I mean, I could, you know, I could just mix up a big, you know, uh, with a palette knife, kind of mix up a big pile. But having it... Having to mix up each batch, then I'm gonna get little varieties within this shape uh, that kind of create interest. Like there's a little bit lighter there, maybe a little warmer, like bits of yellow. Yeah. You know, and, and I'll try to leave all that. All right, so mixing up a color for the ocean here using some of this warm white uh, from Gamblin, uh, ultramarine blue, and a touch of this green mixture here. And I'm gonna have to mix up more of this, I can tell already. But what I'm looking for here is a value relationship. I want to make sure that this white water uh, stands out against uh, the darker water, and I think that looks pretty good. It'll be interesting trying to get a straight horizon, you know, and keeping the strokes vertical. And maybe if it's not perfect, that'll just add, uh, you know, some interest. Actually, this is kind of cool how these vertical strokes almost create little irregularities that kind of suggest the top of a wave. So that's kind of, that's kind of cool. I like that. All right, so I'm going to mix up a color for this grass right here. Um, definitely seeing some alizarin crimson in this. So I've used a bit of burnt sienna, um, some of the warm white, and then also actually some yellow ochre and... Uh, alizarin crimson and I'm paying attention to value too because there's only a slight value shift between this grass right here and uh, and sort of this uh, you know dead grass I want to leave bits of the canvas showing through that's something I've seen in like Monet paintings I mean I'm sure I've seen it in other paintings as well but just not you know not covering everything just leaving some bits of that bare canvas uh, visible okay so i want to soften these edges a little bit um so kind of allowing the 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 colors to kind of blend a little bit i mean it's kind of tricky again keeping the you know keeping the the brush strokes vertical you know, it's, it, it presents some challenges for sure, but I think that's working. You know, I kind of, I kind of did it over here and just allowing that, yeah, like I said, allowing the paint to blend um, so there's no hard edge. I think that looks good. And yet I'm still maintaining the structure, you know, the shape structure. All right, for the distant white water, I'm using uh, some of the warm white with some dioxazine purple. Uh, you know, sometimes I find tinting with dioxazine purple actually creates a light effect. It's kind of interesting, but we'll see how it looks up here. I might need to lighten that a little bit, but also I want to keep it... Um, you know, I don't want a lot of yellow out in the distance because I want, I want this to recede. 
I'm actually kind of liking that. And I might even leave, just like with watercolor, how you'll sort of leave little bits of white. I might do that, actually. Funny how there's little things I've learned from the watercolor sketches I've been doing that are, um, you know, kind of working their way into my oil painting practice. All right, so mixing up a variety of greens here. Uh, trying to keep them all in the same value, but just little, you know, slight temperature shifts. But I want to show you how, uh, you know, how nicely alizarin crimson warms up a green. It's like, it's just, the way alizarin mixes with other colors is just, I love it. It's beautiful. I do want a temperature shift between, you know, these bushes in the foreground and this, these like off in the distance. I might have to lighten these up just a bit and add some more blue to them. I want to leave some of the canvas showing through, but it's kind of a fine line. You know, I have to decide how much. Yeah. So basically I've got this shape right here, but I do kind of like, so the question is, do I break up this shape into two different shapes? And I think maybe so, like kind of have it come down like that and maybe have this be a slightly different color here. Yeah. Something like that. Uh, that might be better because I feel like if that's all one shape it's going to create too much of a barrier so for the distant greens I'm, I'm kind of thinking more of a minty sort of green and uh, so using some phthalo uh, phthalo blue and um, a bit of this you know green mixture or this warm green here uh, and then titanium white and yeah so I like that so I just want to make sure that there's you know, that these greens are cooler than these ones in the foreground. Alright, so now I'm going to do a little touch up on the waves uh, using some of the warm white and also dioxazine purple. And I put some sand in here, but I kind of want to make sure that I, again, I'm not, you know, I don't want a straight line right here. I'm going to kind of mess that up a little bit. I think that's good. All right, so Tad claims to have a train wreck on his hands. That's his words, not mine. <laughs> That's his words, not mine. I never say that. But anyway, uh, we were just talking about how maybe just kind of uh, really defining, you know, defining the shapes could help. So, you know, oftentimes when a painting's not working, I've said before, it's just like, it's, it's, not, it's not a bad painting. You're just not finished. Yeah. You just haven't finished, you haven't solved the problem. Like start off with the sky, for example and just like try to break that down into two simple shapes by like maybe joining the clouds together in some kind of okay, way. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do something drastic here. Okay, <laughs> so like, out. oh, with to get the mineral spirits, yeah. Mineral spirits and just kind of one big cloud shape. Yeah, see already, already in that sky, you know, you've simplified it, right? Yeah, yeah. and then I'm gonna simplify the ocean you might start a new trend like <laughs> painting with a freaking towel oh actually that some cool kind of happened there okay. maybe get that down there but leave that leave leave this section because that looks kind of cool okay like maybe get that out of there actually i like those blue tones that are kind of showing up yep. what if you left this top edge yep. or some of it but kind of wiped out around to define the tree. Okay. What about that? Yeah. But leaving kind of the top. Yep. Design is already getting simplified. Yeah. It's you know? Much better. Yeah. Now this tree right here kind of looks like too much of a triangle. Maybe okay. knock down the top of that a little bit. Yeah, it's better already. Yep, yep, yep. And I mean, you could come back in and reinforce some of those colors, but you're simplifying shapes by doing this. And I can tell you're having fun. <laughs> it's yeah. liberating, right? Yeah. You're just eliminating all the details completely. I see a little detail there. I see a fence oh, yeah. post. Yep. Get that fence yeah. post out of there. <laughs> All right, so now, actually, this is kind of interesting now that it's, 
I see this corner, that kind of bugs me a little bit. Here I am like working <laughs> on your painting. <laughs> we'll both sign it, yeah. All right, so here's what I finished up with. I did end up darkening the uh, yellow ochreish grass along the sides here. I felt like there was a bit too much of a value shift between the green grass and the yellow ochre grass. Uh, also, the higher value of the yellow ochre grass was kind of competing with the white water out here, and I wanted to make sure you know, that the eye passed through the composition out towards the white water and the ocean. Uh, I used a single brush for this painting. It was a, a rosemary number 10 synthetic flat. And I feel like by limiting my options, you know, just using one brush and doing vertical strokes only, uh, it really forced me to simplify and focus on shapes. Uh, because all I really had to work with in this painting was, you know, shape, value, and color. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you'd like to see some extra videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. Uh, Happy New Year, stay creative, and I'll see you in the next video.